chica. In this video, we're going to look at solving exponential functions question, uh, focusing on decreasing. There's another video out there for increasing, uh, which is a little bit easier. So you should probably watch it first before you're focusing on the decreasing one. Let's first take a look at the steps. Step by step. All right, the steps for increasing and decreasing are the same. Our first step is we have to identify that it's an exponential function. After that, we'll identify our variables, create your equation or your rule, determine the desired value of x, uh, calculate y for the desired value of x using the rule from step 3, and lastly, answer the specific question that you're being asked. So let's take a look at an example. All right, Michelle is looking at buying a new car, and she's deciding between an, an American car and a Japanese car. The American car costs $31,000, and the Japanese car costs $29,000. However, since she plans to sell the car after five years, she's also concerned with how much each car depreciates. The American car loses 1.7% of its value every month, whereas the Japanese car loses 18% of its value every year. Which of these two cars will be worth more in five years when Michelle plans to sell it? Right, this is a big question. Let's look at our first step. First thing we need to do is identify that it's an exponential function. And we're going to do that by looking for certain words that might give us a hint. So it says that it goes up by a certain factor of multiplying. Do we see any words like triples or doubles? I don't think so. Uh, now we have an initial value or a starting value. In this case, we've actually got two. We have one for the American car. It starts at $31,000, and the Japanese car is $29,000. So in this case, because we have two different situations that we're looking at, we're going to have two different initial, variable, uh, initial values. We're going to take a look. Is there anything appreciating or depreciating, going up in value or going down in value? And in this case, again, we can see right here we have the word depreciates, and we're told that the, both of the cars lose uh, value. I'm going to highlight as well the American car loses 1.7% of its value every month, and the Japanese car loses 18% of its value every year. Uh, again, we're not showing a graph, we're not showing the rule, so that should be enough for us to identify this as an exponential function, or in this case, two exponential functions. Let's take a look at our next step. All right, next up we have to identify our variables. Now, when I do this, I'm actually going to look for, at the Japanese car and the American car separately. So I'm going to write American and Japanese. And that way we can kind of organize our work. And there might be some differences um, between uh, the two as we go along. So we'll do the American car here on the left and a Japanese car on the right. So what are our variables? Well, it says x is almost always time. And in this case, x for both the American car and for the Japanese car is time. But I want to be more specific than that. In other words, we want to look at what our unit on time is. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. The American car loses 1.7% of its value every month. So in the case of the American car, we're going to talk about months. So we're looking at time and months. For the Japanese car, we're told it loses 18% of its value every year. So while we're still talking about time, we're looking at a different unit, years in this case, instead of month, instead of months. That's going to be important as we go through uh, the rest of the question. Y is often value. In this case, that makes sense as well. We're talking about the value of the car. And value is uh, always in dollars. It's going to be value in dollars. And for the Japanese car, same thing. We're still talking about value uh, in dollars. All right, so we've identified our variables. Let's move on to the next step. Now we have to create our equation or a rule. In this case, we're going to have two different rules or two different equations, one corresponding to the American car, one corresponding to the Japanese car. First thing we need to do, uh, I'll actually write out y equals, oh, sorry, we lost it up here, and y equals over here. And we're going to start with our initial value. With our American car, we said the initial value was $31,000. And with the Japanese car, our initial value was $29,000. That represents the purchase price in this case. 
Next step, we have to calculate our base. This is the amount that we're going to multiply by every time. Now, when we look at a car going down in value, uh, it's going to be a little bit tricky. If the car stayed the same, it would have 100% of its value. It would not have increased or decreased. Since if we look at the uh, American car, it's going down in value. It's losing, so we're going to subtract 1.7% a month. So when we subtract that 1.7 from 100, it gives us 98.3%. So what that means is every month it'll have 98.3% of the value it had the previous month. So it's not holding its value. If it was 100%, it would be staying the same. Since it's 98.3%, it's actually going down. Now, before we make that into our base, we're going to convert it to a decimal. So we'll put 0 0.983 as opposed to 98.3%. And that's just dividing by 100. So we move our decimal spot two places to the left. And then we can go and we can put that up next to, next to our initial value. And, for, and then uh, for our Japanese car, same idea here. It starts with 100% of its value. And it doesn't keep its value either. It actually goes down by 18%. And that means that it has 82% of its value. Now, these numbers are quite different. The reason for that, remember, is that the American car, this represents its uh, new value every month. But for the Japanese car, the 82% represents an entire year. So that's why the values are so different. And then for the 82%, we're going to once again convert it to a decimal and 0 0.82 by moving two decimals to the left. And it's important when you're converting to, uh, your bases, don't round these values. Sometimes you might get an odd number like this where you've you got a, three decimal places. But I want you to leave them. If you round them, it can make it quite a substantial difference in the end. So we're going to put our base up here next to our initial value, 0 0.82 in this case. And the last thing we need to do is just write the rule. So we've written most of it. We just have to put this little power of x. And we can write that in both of these. And basically, so what that means over here is we start with $31,000. We multiply it by 0.983, or 100% minus the 1.7% of the value that it loses. And we'll do that for every month. For the Japanese car, same idea. It starts at $29,000, a little cheaper. In this case, it loses 18%, uh, so it maintains 82% or 0 0.82 of its value, and that's every year. So again, we have to make those little distinctions. But ready for step four. So our next step is we have to determine the desired value of x. Now, our desired value of x, we got to look at how many years uh, or how many months are they planning on keeping the vehicle. And we can take a look up here. We can see that we're planning to keep the vehicle for five years. And so five years. Uh, for the Japanese car, we're just going to be looking at for x equal to 5. That makes sense. But for the, uh, but for the American car, we've got to convert that to months. So in this case, we want 5 times 12, 12 months in a year, equals 60. And uh, so in this case, x equals 60. So that's 60 months. Our next step. We have to calculate y for the desired value of x using your rule. Again, two different rules, one for the American car and one for the Japanese car. So we're going to go back to our rule and put in the value of x. So in this case, it's going to be 31,000 times 0 0.983 to the power of 60. And over here, we've got y equals 29,000 0 0.82 to the power of 5. And remember, this is 5 because it's 5 years. This is 60 because it's 60 months. And next, we can bring up our calculator and find out what those two values are. So look at the American car first. 31,000 times 0 0.983 to the power of 60. 
Every calculator has a different power of button, so you want to make sure that uh, you know where yours is. This one is, is uh, x to the power of y. Some of them are written as y to the power of x, and other ones have a, it's called a hat button, which looks like uh, two-thirds of a triangle. And so when we do this, it says it's going to have a value of $11,080.84. Don't worry about all these decimals here. It's far more uh, precise than we need. In the case of dealing with a, a car, we could go to the nearest dollar, I'm going to go to the nearest penny because that makes sense for money. So we can go down here. Y equals, what was our value again? Oh, sorry, I didn't bring it up. Let's go back. 31,000 times 0.983 to the power of 60. So $11,080.84. $11,080.84. And 84 cents. And now we'll have to calculate it for the Japanese car. Same idea, except this time slightly different numbers. 29,000 that we purchased it. 82% is what it keeps. And then to the power of five for five years. And it's worth 10,751.46. Remember, since this is a five in the number before it's a five, we're going to round up. So 10, 751, 46. 10, 751, 46. That's dollars. All right. Last step. We've got to go and answer the question. It's not asking us how much the cars are going to be worth at the end of five years. It's going to be, uh, oh, actually it is. Which of these cars will be worth more in five years? Time when Michelle uh, plans to sell it. Well, we can see from this one, the American car will be worth more. So if we answer the question, we can simply say the American car will be worth more. Now, that may not be too big of a surprise in that it also costs more to buy the American car. So if we actually had to compare which one was a better value, we'd have to compare our initial purchase price and then the amount that the car was uh, worth. But we're not asked to do that in this case. So there you go. Check out some uh, other videos for all the concepts we'll be doing throughout the year. Bye-bye.